if you had to outline your identity, where would you start and where would it go? I don't think there's a need to do it anymore. I don't think I have to do that. Not Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, that's the black guy that turned Jewish. Or that's the guy with the one eye. Or that's... I don't think those hooks are there anymore for me. I think I'm judged now... And I may be living in fantasy land, but I think I'm judged now as a performer. Sammy Davis Jr., professional entertainer. That's it. Well, this is that moment My once in a lifetime When I can explore A new and exciting land For once in my lifetime I feel like a giant I soar like an eagle As though I had wings One good measure of Sammy Davis Jr. as an entertainer is that his talent has always been larger than the controversies he faced and some of those were enormous. He was a groundbreaking performer from the beginning. Please let me do good things. He was born in Harlem in 1925, the son of a dancer and a chorus girl who separated when he was two and a half. His father and uncle took him on the road, and ever since, Sammy Davis Jr. has been a professional entertainer who early on had to break rules just to show off his talent. Jimmy Stewart. Oh, gee whiz. Now, 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 who can solve this mystery? For instance, in the early 50s, his uncle told him he shouldn't do these impressions for fear that a black man impersonating white people would alienate the audience. I don't know why you're always picking on me, boy, because after all, I'm with you and you're with me and we're a partner. Oh! But the stars he imitated loved his act. I was just staggered by the, the amount of energy and the versatility. Jerry Lewis was one of a number of stars who offered help and professional advice to Sammy. Davis had become the featured performer in the trio that included his father on the left and was named for his uncle, Will Maston, on the right. I had been brought up by a theatrical father, just as he was, and taught some basic ground rules. So I, I made a couple of notes about that and told it to him. I told him that he was wearing that plaid jacket that kind of distracted from what he was doing. And his first note was, get rid of the jacket, you can't follow it. I said, what do you mean? He says, they start, to watch the, they start to watch your jacket. And he had enough grease in his hair uh, to make a downhill. I said, you should get rid of that. I made a boo-boo. <laughs> the thing that I think impressed me so much was that I could see the years and years of experience exploding on that stage. And it was, it mesmerized you. Like the beat, beat, beat of the tom-tom When the jungle shadows fall Like the tick-tock of a state clock Leaning up against the wall Like the drip, drip, drip of a raindrop When a summer shower is due A voice within me keeps repeating You, you, you All right, all right I may be on a roll here now Davis occupies massive penthouse suites filled with games and gadgets when he performs in Las Vegas, where he's been one of the top paid entertainers for more than three decades. What's different now are the house rules about where he goes after a show. Rules that, when he started, were stacked against him and every other black performer. Don't you know In the Vegas of the 50s, black stars who were headliners couldn't share in the glamour they created. They couldn't even stay in the hotels where they worked. Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. Night after night, Sammy walked out the kitchen exits and drove to the west side of Las Vegas, the black neighborhoods where he roomed in boarding houses. Now the house was very much like these this house here, one story, clean, immaculate. Do you remember what your room looked like? Yeah, it was small. <laughs> Most of the gamblers had, had a thing about them. They didn't want black people around them when they were gambling. They didn't want 
waiters or anything like that. At the Sands Hotel, man, they drained the pool. Lena Horn's daughter went into the pool and they drained it. The woman's starring in the main room at the Copa. And, uh, and I'm not talking about uh, 31 or 29. I'm talking about this is in the 50s. And you, you get to a point where you just suddenly say to yourself, enough already. Guys, but don't make, and of course my dad and uncle, God rest their souls, they, they kept saying, don't do that, don't make no waves, you know, you can't do that. Oh, hey there, you on that high-flying cloud, though she won't throw a crumb to you, you think someday she'll come to you. Better forget her. So Davis used his talent as a weapon, and he aimed it in several directions. He finally refused to perform in clubs where blacks weren't accepted as patrons. He also went heavily into debt gambling when he did help break the color barrier in casinos. The attention he focused on himself became grist for scandal sheets. And movie studios got upset because Davis was frequently photographed with white actresses. Gangster Mickey Cohen once wrote that he was offered money to cause Davis physical harm and angrily refused at a time when Sammy was seeing actress Kim Novak. Better forget her. So a certain amount of it was just wanting to break the rules then, mm -hmm. such as? In other words, in those days, you could have had an affair if you were black with any woman in the business so long as you kept it hidden what the industry disliked totally was that I wouldn't go for that. I wouldn't hide. And I got sick of hiding, and I was embarrassed by hiding. In 1960 came his highly publicized seven-year marriage to actress Mai Britt. But despite his headline-making career, his romances, his loss of an eye in an auto accident, his conversion to Judaism and flirtations with 60s occult movements, his charter membership and Frank Sinatra's Rat Pack, Nothing brought him more explosive publicity than a seeming political shift. He had been highly visible at the peak of the civil rights movement, a performer who, through benefits, raised more money for the NAACP than any other star. That image would turn in the early 70s. In 1972, although he remained a Democrat, he supported Richard Nixon for president because, he said, he thought by his involvement that he could help restore valuable social programs. You aren't going to buy Sammy Davis Jr. by inviting him to the White House. You're going to buy him by doing something for America. And that is what we Instead, a spontaneous gesture at a political rally brought him heavy fire from some other civil rights leaders who accused him of selling out. Why do you think people reacted so strongly to the Nixon hug? Because I disappointed them. I disappointed their preconceived ideas. I was a free, free spirit liberal. And they didn't want to see, you know. And I can understand it. Would you take it back if you could? No, because it wasn't planned. It wasn't something that I sat down and planned. It was a reaction to a moment, and you can't take that back. Dancer Altavis Gore, who's been married to him for 18 years, says the Nixon controversy was one of the most troublesome she saw him face. The other was getting past 50. He didn't like the sound of 50, I don't think. I thought he really felt like he was terribly old, and he wasn't at all. But that's the way he felt, and so he was just, I don't know, rude. Nasty. We got to 50 and I didn't want to get old, you know. Geez, how, you know, I can't get rid of the jumpsuits and I can't get rid of the gear. I can't, how are they going to accept me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I think a lot of people remember from that period all the gold, too. Yes. The chains and the gold rings. Where, where did that come from to begin with? It's the people giving me rings and I'd keep putting them on. And then it became a show business again over theatrical theatricality. And it became a, a thing, and I say, I can get away with this. And people talk about, hey, let me see your jewelry. Hey, let me see the chain. Let me see the new thing you got. And I enjoyed it. It was fun, but then it becomes an obligation. 
But all these fingers will remain empty, I'm afraid, for a while. He once filled his hotel suites with a flow of friends and well-wishers and hangers-on and catered food. Now he often cooks for himself. He is also self-educated in history and science. He reads voraciously, although he never spent a day in school and can't write much more than his name. The cooking, he says, is partially a substitute for the heavy drinking he used to do. To use his analogy, he had to trim the fat in his personal life and with audiences as well. Instead of just going ahead and segueing into a number, or here's one I'd like to do for you, I had to go, you know, many years ago, you know, and, and, and just keep going on and on, and somebody, you could see people now timing it. He's been talking for two minutes. When is he going to sing the song, you know? And you get, you fall in love with the sound of your own voice. It's that conductor who's never had a symphony, and he's a brilliant conductor, and he starts to conduct, and he gets fascinated with his hands. He forgets about the musicians. He's watching his hands, and then he realizes I've got control over 80 people, you know. Same thing with the performer. So you get rid of that. You get rid of it. Hey, what it is? Oh, my God. Davis says this kind of positive acceptance by other blacks has come back to him now after a period when it was often visibly obvious to him that he was being shunned. I have felt for the last three years this embracing, and it's there for me. What's made the difference? Has it been time? Is it something you're time. doing? Is it? Uh... I think it's also, to be honest with you, I think being married to Altavis for 18 years, you know, they saw us settling down, or terminology I use in the book, he's come home. The number he's used to end his act for years isn't one of his hits. It's Mr. Bojangles, about an old song and dance man whose time has passed. Davis had his left hip surgically replaced less than two years ago, but the moves are still there. And this is a kind of signature number for him. A newer man, Bojangles, and he dance for you. In worn out shoes. To me, he's a composite of all the black street performers, dancers, all the cats that didn't make it, but had that inner dignity, always had the, the frayed cuffs, yes, but they were clean. Always the little hat, the little gesture, you know. And to do the song always takes a little out of me because for a long time, I thought I was going to wind up like the man in the song. I could swear I heard someone say please That was Mr. Bojangles Call me Mr. Bojangles Mr. Bojangles Come back and dance, 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 dance A Mr. It took me a long time to be happy with myself. And suddenly the realization comes to you. You're a lucky cat, and you better be able to deal with that. It doesn't mean that everybody's gonna like you, but if you greet a person and you say, this is my talent, I think they'll give you an even up chance to try to entertain them. Mr. Bo Jangles. 